Now, in this lecture, we'll find out the length of line segment X using three different methods. In the drawing, we have right triangle, triangle ABC. We know that angle DAC equals to 45 degrees, angle ABC equals to 90 degrees, side AB equals to 6 units, side DC equals to 10 units. And we want to find out the value of line segment AD that is equal to X. So we start with the first method. In the first method, we make a construction. We will extend line segment AD by a straight line. And then from point C, we will draw perpendicular to the extended AD. So this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will also equal to 90 degrees. We will define the touching point between the extended AD and the perpendicular from point C as point E. And uh, here, if you focus on the right triangle, triangle AEC, the sum of the angles are equal to 180 degrees. We will define, first of all, line segment DE as Y. And in the right triangle, triangle AEC, the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees. In this right triangle, triangle AEC, the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have in the right triangle, triangle AEC, we have 45 degrees. And we have also 90 degrees. And we have angle ACE. It is the missing angle. In total, the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees according to the rule that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Here we will subtract 90 degrees and also 45 degrees. On this equation, here 45 degrees plus angle ACE will be equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees, it is 90 degrees. Here we subtract 45 degrees from this equation. And we get that the missing angle, angle ACE, is equal to 90 degrees minus 45 degrees. It is 45 degrees. So angle ACE equals to 45 degrees. Write it down here. This angle equals to 45 degrees. And we also have the wall that in front of 
equal sides <coughs> in the in front of equal angles in the triangle there are equal sides so those two angles they are equal to each other in triangle AEC therefore in front of those two equal angles we have equal sides that is to say AE must be equal to EC AE must be equal to EC but AE equals to X plus Y a equals to x plus y and from this equation x plus y equals to a e equals to e c we will derive that e c is also equals to x plus y so we found out that e c is also equals to x plus y Those two angles, they are defined as vertex angles, and we know that vertex angles are equal to each other. That is to say, angle EDC, angle EDC, this angle, is equal to this angle, that is actually angle BDA. According to the rule that vertex angles are equal to each other, so those two angles are equal to each other so if we define one angle as alpha then the other angle will be also equal to alpha because of the fact that they are equal to each other yeah. angle BDA will be also equal to alpha So this angle equals to 90 degrees and we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Therefore, angle BAD, angle BAD plus angle alpha, in total they must be equal to 90 degrees. We subtract alpha from this equation and we'll get that angle BAD is equal to 90 degrees minus alpha. This angle equals to 90 degrees minus alpha. From the same reason, this angle. will be also equal to 90 degrees minus alpha <coughs> actually we found out that all the angles of the right triangle triangle A, B, D this right triangle can go into all the angles of the right triangle, triangle EDC. This triangle
both triangles have angle that is equal to alpha, both those green triangles have angle that is equal to 90 degrees minus alpha, and both those white triangles have a right angle. Therefore, those two triangles are similar to each other, according to angle, 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 similarity rule. So, I will write it down that actually we know that in triangle ABD, the right triangle, triangle ABD, in the right triangle, triangle DEC, Angle BAD is equal to angle ECD and both those two angles are equal to 90 degrees minus alpha I repeat again in the right triangles, triangle ABD and triangle DEC, the right green triangles, and the BAD equals to angle ECD equals to 90 degrees minus alpha. Angle ADB, this angle, is equal to angle EDC, this angle. And both those two angles they are equal to alpha according to our definition. Angle ADB equals to angle DC equals to alpha. And the third angle, angle ABD, this angle it is equal to angle DC, this angle. And both those two angles they are equal to 90 degrees. So I found out that all the angles in the right triangle triangle ABD can run to all the angles in the right triangle triangle DEC. Therefore, we we'll conclude from it that triangle ABD is similar, this is the sign of similar to triangle DEC. According to angle, 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 similarly to rule. Okay. And from the fact that those two green triangles they are similar to each other, hence we we'll conclude that AB is equal to EC. AB equals to EC. AB is equal to EC according to the rule that corresponds in sides in congruent triangles are equal to each other. Those two green triangles can go into each other, therefore, actually, here we have two triangles that are similar to each other, therefore, because of the fact the those two triangles are similar to each other. We will conclude that the following relationship exists between their sides. We will conclude 
that AB over EC This will be equation number one, AB over EC is equal to BD over DE and it is equal to AD over DC. I repeat again from the fact that the two main triangles are similar to each other, that is to say, triangle ABD is similar to triangle DC, we will conclude. That AB over EC equals to BD over DE and it is equal to AD over DC. It is given us the question that AB equals to 6 units, so we substitute AB by 6. We've, we have already found out that EC equals to X plus Y, so we substitute. EC by X plus Y and it is equal to BD BD over DE DE equals to Y according to our definition so we substitute DE by Y and it is equal to AD AD it is equal to x, this is the missing variable, x over dc. dc equals to 10 according to what is given in the question. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 1, 6 over x plus y equals to bd over y equals to x over 10. We will find out the value of side BD by implementing the Pythagoras theorem in the right green triangle, triangle ABD. In the right green triangle, triangle ABD. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, a B squared plus B D squared equals to A D squared. Okay, and we know that A B is equal to six units, so A B is six squared, that is thirty six. BD is the missing variable plus BD square and it is equal to AD square. AD is equal to X, so AD square is X square. So we found out that 36 plus BD square equals to X square. We will subtract 36 from this equation and we get that BD square equals to x squared minus 36. We we'll take root out of this equation and we we'll take the we we'll get the, the value of BD is equal to the square root of x squared minus 36. Now we can substitute BD in equation number one by square root of x x squared minus 36, we will do it now and we will get that according to equation number 1 6 over x plus y
equals to BD and BD equals to the square root of x square on 36 over y and it is equal to x over 10. So from this long equation we will derive two equations. The first equation will be six over x plus y equals to x over ten. Here we will multiply equation we will cross multiply this equation, equation number one, and we will get that according to equation number one. 6 times 10 is 60 and it is equal to x times x plus y we will open the brackets here and we will get that 60 equals to x squared plus x times y We will subtract x squared from this equation, equation number 1, and we will get that according to equation number 1, xy equals to 60 minus x squared. So I found out that according to equation number 1, xy equals to 60 minus x squared. Now we will create equation number 2 from this equation. According to equation number 2 we will get that square root of x squared minus 36 over y it is equal to x over 10. Here we cross multiply equation number 2 and we'll get that according to equation number 2 10 times square root of x squared or 36 is equal to x times y so according to equation number 2 xy it is equal to 10 times square root of x squared minus 36. Now we create equation number 3 that states that xy according to equation number 1 must be equal to xy according to equation number 2. So equation number 3 states that xy according to equation number 1 that is actually 60 minus x squared must be equal to xy according to equation number 2 that is actually 10 times x square uh, square root of x square minus 36 here we will square this equation equation number 3 that is to say we will uh, square both sides of equation number 3 so here we will add 60 minus x squared squared it is equal to 10 squared is 100 and uh, here the square will cancel the root and we will uh, left only with x squared minus 36 So we will open the brackets on both sides of equation number 3 and we will get that 60 minus x squared squared it is equal to 60 squared that is 3600 plus x squared squared is 
x to the power of 4 minus 2 times 60 times x squared and it is equal to 100 times x squared minus 100 times 146 is minus 3600. Here we will add 3600 to this equation, equation number 3, and we will get that according to equation number 3, 3600 plus 3600 is 7200 plus x to the power of 4 minus 2 times uh, 60 is minus 120 x squared And it is equal to 100 x squared. Here we will subtract 100 x squared from this equation, equation number 3. And we will get that according to equation number 3, x to the power of 4 minus 120 minus 100 is minus 220, so it is minus 220 x squared plus 7200 equals to zero. We know that minus 220 is minus 180 minus 40, so I write it down. We substitute minus 220 by minus 120 and minus 40. We do it now and we get that x to the power of 4 minus 180x squared minus 40x squared plus 7200 equals to 0 From those two expressions, we will take x squared as a common factor. What is left from x to the power of 4 after we took from it x squared as a common factor? What is left is actually x squared. What is left from minus 100 x squared after we took from it x squared as a common factor? What is left is actually minus 180. And from those two expressions, minus 40x squared plus 7200, we we'll take minus 40 as a common factor. What is left from minus 40x squared after we took from it, x, uh, minus 40 as a common factor, what is left? It is actually x squared. And what is left from 7200 after we took from it, minus 40 as a common factor? What is left? It is actually minus 180 because of the fact that minus 180 times minus 40 it is equal to 7200. It is equal to 0. So here we take x squared minus 180 is a common factor out of those two expressions and we get that according to equation number 3 x squared minus 180 is a common factor. What is left from this expression after we took from it x squared minus 180 is a common factor? What is left it is actually x squared. And what is left from this expression after we took from it x squared minus 180 is a common factor? What is left it is actually minus 40 and it is equal to 0. So according to equation number 3, we found out that x squared minus 180 times x squared 
minus 40 equals to 0. So here we have two solutions that are possible for x. The first solution for x is that x squared minus 180 equals to 0. And the second solution for x is that either x squared minus 40 equals to 0. So according to the first solution, x squared equals to 180. We take out all of this equation, equation number 1, and we get that x equals to the square root of 180. 180 is equal to 36 times 5. We substitute 180 by 36 times 5, and we get that according to equation number 1, x equals to square root of 36 is 6, and inside the root we have we left only with square root of 5. So here, x that is equal to 6 times square root of 5, 6 times square root of 5, is equal to 13.416 units 13.416 units x equals to 13.416 units this is greater than 10 this is the first solution And the second solution for x is actually x squared minus 40 equals to 0. That is to say x squared is equal to 40. We take out of, of this equation, equation number 2, and we get that x equals to the square root of 40. 40 is 10 times 4, 4 times 10. The square root of 4 is 2, so x equals to 2 times square root of 10. So we found out that according to the second equation, according to the second solution, the value of x, that is the line segment that we are looking for in this question, equals to square root of 10 times 2. And the square root of 10 times 2 is equal to 6.32 units. So if I know that x equals to 6.32 units, that is actually less than 10 units. It's less than 10. So we have here two solutions that are possible for x. The first solution is x equals to 13.416, that is better than 10. And the, the second solution is that x equals to 6.32 units, that is less than 10 units. And uh, we, in the next step, we'll find out which of those two solutions are uh, really relevant to us because here we have uh, the right triangle triangle ABD and this right triangle triangle ABD as if this triangle triangle ADC so I will copy those two triangles and we will we'll analyze 
those two triangles in order to find out which of the two solutions that we found out is correct in this specific drawing. So first of all, we have the green triangle triangle ABD, green eye triangle triangle ABD. And we have also triangle ADC is adjacent to the green triangle, triangle ABD. Here it is given as the question that dc equals to 10 units, ad equals to x, it is the line segment that we are looking for, and it is given as the question that angle dac equals to 45 degrees. We define this angle, angle BAD, that is equal to 90 degrees minus alpha as angle theta. I repeat again, we define this angle, angle BAD, that is equal to 90 degrees minus alpha as theta. And we already found out that this angle, angle ADB equals to alpha and so this is the green triangle, triangle ABD Angle ADC is an external angle of triangle ABD. Angle ADC is an external angle of the right triangle, triangle ABD. Right, green triangle, triangle ABD. And we have a rule that states that the side of the of an external angle Still angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two interior angles of the triangle, of course, that are not adjacent to it, that are not
and get them to eat. So according, so we have here inside triangle, the green triangle, triangle ABD, we have three internal angles that is actually theta, alpha, and this right angle, angle ABD, and the angle ADC, this angle, angle ADC is defined as an exterior angle in relation to the green triangle. And according to the rule that a water, the size of an external angle of a, a triangle is equal to the sum of the two internal angles that are not adjacent to it. We have here three internal angles, theta, alpha, and 90 degrees. And the two external angles that are not adjacent to this angle, angle ADC, are theta plus 90 degrees. Therefore, according to the rule that I wrote here, the external angle, angle ADC, will be equal to 90 degrees plus theta and we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees especially in triangle ADC the sum of its angles must be equal to 180 degrees so which angles we have in the right triangle, triangle uh, in triangle ADC it is not right triangle triangle ADC which angles we have? We have three angles. One angle is this angle that is equal to 45 degrees. This angle equals to 90 degrees plus theta. And the missing angle here is angle ACD. In total, the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. So here we will subtract 90 degrees from this equation and we get that 45 degrees plus theta plus angle ACD equals to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees, it is 90 degrees. Here we subtract 45 degrees from this equation and we get that angle theta plus angle ACD equal, they are equal to 90 degrees from 45 degrees, it is 45 degrees and finally we subtract theta from this equation and we get that the missing angle, angle ACD angle ACD, it is equal to 45 degrees minus theta ok, the missing angle here, it is equal to 45 degrees minus theta that is to say, angle ACD that is equal to 45 degrees in triangle ADC is the smallest angle in this triangle, triangle ADC. Okay, so we can write down that angle You can write down that angle ACD that is actually equal to 45 degrees minus theta is the smallest angle in triangle ADC and we have another rule so this is rule number one rule number two 
Et quand on est heureux là bas tout, in front of the smallest angle in the triangle, There is the shortest side. I will read all number two again in front of the smallest angle in the triangle, there is the shortest side. And because of the fact that in triangle ADC, angle ACD, Angle ACD that is equal to 45 degrees minus theta is the smallest angle, is the smallest angle, therefore in front of this smallest angle there will be uh, the, the shortest side, so therefore we can, according to rule number two, we, we derive that AD that is equal to X is the shortest side, is the shortest side in triangle ADC that is to say AD that is equal to X must be less than 10, than 10 units because we have here one angle that is equal to angle DC equals to 10 units and angle X must be the shortest angle in triangle ADC, therefore, it must be less than 10 units. And so we add two possible solutions. And the solution that x equals to 13.41x16 that is greater than 10 it is incorrect solution because x must be less than 10 units therefore we left only with the solution that x is equal to 10 times root of 2 times root of 10 units that is about 6.32 Unit. So the answer to the question is that the length of line segment X that is AD it is equal to 2 times cos of 10 units or 6.32 units. Okay, we finished with the first method. In the next step, I will present to you how to find out the value of line segment X, that is AD, according to the second method.
In the second method, we'll make another construction. From point D, we'll draw straight line on AC in such a way that the angle that will be created will be equal to 45 degrees. I'll repeat again. From point D, we draw a straight line on AC in such a way that this angle will be equal to 45 degrees. We will define the touching point of the straight line from point D and AC as point E and we have the rule that in front of equal angles in a triangle there are equal sides. If we focus on triangle ADE, in this triangle we have two equal angles. Those, both, those angles are equal to 45 degrees. Therefore, in front of those two equal angles, there must be an equal sides. That is to say, AD must be equal to DE. Okay? But AD equals to X according to what is given in the question. So from this equation, X equals to AD equals to DE, we derive that DE is also equals to X. DE is also equals to X. So I can write down here that D equals to X. And we also know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees. And especially in triangle ADE, the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees. We have here 45 degrees plus 45 degrees is 90 degrees. So, angle, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees in order to complete the sum of the angles in triangle ADE to 180 degrees. So, we found out that angle ADE equals to 90 degrees. Okay. In the next step, actually, we will define angle B, A, D is theta if angle B, A, D in the right triangle, triangle A, B, D equals to theta then this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta and We know that triangle ABC is a right triangle, therefore BC is one side of uh, the right triangle triangle ABC. Therefore BC is absolutely a straight line. BC is a straight line. Can I know that BC is a straight line? Line segment BC is a straight line because it is one side of triangle ABC. BC is a straight line. And we have the rule that says that 
the sum of the angles on one side of, the, of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So if we focus on the right side, on the upper side of the straight line BC at point D, then the sum of the angles according to the rule that I mentioned must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have on the upper side of the straight line BC at point D? We have here one angle that is equal to 90 degrees minus theta. We have this angle that is equal to 90 degrees. And we have also the missing angle that is actually angle EDC, this angle. In total, the sum of those angles must be equal to 180 degrees. According to the rule that I mentioned, that the sum of the angles on one side of the straight line equals to 180 degrees. So here we have 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees. So we have 180 degrees on both sides of, of this equation. So 180 degrees will get cancelled. And we left only with minus theta plus the missing angle, angle EDC, angle EDC, it is equal to zero. We will add theta to this equation, and we will get that the missing angle, angle EDC, equals to theta. Okay, so we found out that the missing angle, angle EDC equals to theta. Angle EDC equals to theta. We will focus on the on triangle E. So this angle equals to theta. And here In the next step, from point E, we we'll draw perpendicular on BC. I repeat again, from point E, we we'll draw perpendicular on BC. So this angle equals to 90 degrees. And this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. And we we'll define the touching point of the perpendicular from point E and BC is point F. So triangle EFD is a right triangle. So if this angle equals to theta, then this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta, of course. Because of the fact that the sum of those two angles equals to 90 degrees. So this angle equals to 90 degrees minus theta. We actually prove in the next step that those two right grain triangles can go into each other according to angle side angle rule. Okay, so we'll focus on the green triangle, triangle ABD. And on the second green triangle, triangle ADF. First of all, we know that angle BAD, this angle, is 
is equal to angle EDF, this angle, and both those two angles are equal to theta according to uh, definition. And we also know that those two sides are equal to each other, they are both equal to x, AD equals to DE equals to x, AD equals to DE equals to x. Again, we found out that LDB AD equals to LDF equals to theta, AD equals to DE equals to x. And both those two angles they are equal to each other, they are equal to 90 degrees minus theta. So angle ADB this angle equals to this angle that is actually angle DEF. And both those two angles they are equal to 90 degrees. Minus theta. Okay. Angle ADB equals to angle DEF equals to 90 degrees minus theta. So we actually proved that the right triangle and triangle ABD can go in. This is the sign of can go in. To the right triangle, triangle DEF, according to angle side angle wall, and from the front. that those two green triangles can go into each other, we will conclude that AB equals to DF. AB equals to DF. Hence, AB equals to DF. I repeat again, actually, AB equals to DF, according to the rule that corresponding sides and congruent triangles are equal to each other. Those two green triangles can go into each other, therefore the corresponding sides, that is to say AB and DF, will be equal to each other. But AB equals to six units, it is given as a question. So from this equation, 6, six equals to AB equals to DF, we will conclude that DF is also equals to 6 units. DF is also equals to 6 units. From the drawing, it is very easy to see that the value of line segment FC, FC, it is equal to FC equals to DC minus DF. Again, DC minus DF equals to FC. So FC equals to DC, that is 10 units. It is given as the question. Minus DF. We just went and found out that DF equals to 6 units, so FC equals to 10 minus 6, this is 4. <coughs> so we found out that FC equals to 4 units. FC equals to 4 units. Likewise, BD will be also equal to EF. PD will be equal to EF. 
according to the sum all the corresponding sides of congruent triangles are equal to each other. So if we define BD as Y, so if BD equals to Y according to our definition, then from this equation Y equals to BD equals to EF, we will derive that EF is also equals to Y. EF equals to Y. EF is also equals to Y. In the next step, we will prove that the right triangle, the right big triangle, triangle ABC, can went to the right small triangle, triangle EFC. Why those two triangles can went to each other? Actually, we'll prove that the right triangle, triangle ABC, is similar to the right triangle, triangle EFC. So, why those two triangles are similar to each other? First of all, we know that angle ABC in triangle ABC is equal to angle EFC in triangle EFC, and both those two angles they are equal to 90 degrees. The second, we have here, the second thing is that we have here a common angle. This angle belongs to both triangles, so angle BCA is equal to angle FCE and this is actually a common angle, it belongs to both triangles. Repeat again in triangle C, B, C, and triangle EFC. Angle ABC equals to angle EFC equals to 90 degrees. Angle BCA equals to angle FCE. It is a common angle. And the third angle, this is actually angle BAC. Angle BAC, this angle will be equal to this angle. This is actually angle FEC. And they will be equal to each other according to third angle theorem. Third angle theorem. So what is third angle theorem? Third angle theorem is that if two angles in one triangle are equal to two angles in another triangle, then the first pair of angles must be also equal to each other in both those two triangles because they are complementary to 180 degrees. Okay, so we actually proved the triangle ABC is similar, this is the sign of similar to triangle EFC according to angle, 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 similarity rule. And for the fact that those two right angles are similar to each other, we conclude that A, B over B, C
is equal to EF over FC. From the fact that triangle ABC is similar to triangle EFC, we will conclude that the following relationship exists between their sides. We will conclude that AB over BC equals to EF over FC. AB equals to 6, so we we'll substitute AB by 6. BC equals to y plus 10, so we we'll substitute bc by y plus 10 and it is equal to ef, ef equals to y over fc, fc equals to 4 so in conclusion we found out that 6 over According to equation number 1, 6 over y plus 10 equals to y over 4. Here we will cross multiply equation number 1, this equation, and we'll get that according to equation number 1, 6 times 4 is 24, it is equal to y times y plus 10. Here we'll open the brackets on this side of equation number 1, and we'll get that according to equation number 1, 24 equals to y square plus 10y. We will subtract 24 from this equation, equation number 1, and we will get that according to equation number 1. y square plus 10y minus 24 equals to 0. So we got a quadratic equation and the General formula for quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. Here a, b, and c are the coefficients of the quadratic equation, and x is the variable that we are looking for, and we find out the value of x according to a special formula, according to the following formula, that x is equal to minus b plus minus root of b squared minus 4 times ac over 2a. In our specific quadratic equation, the coefficient a is equal to 1, the coefficient b is equal to 10, and the coefficient c is equal to minus 24, and the variable that we are looking for is y, so x is equal to y, so we put the data inside the equation for x and we find out the value of the values of y. That is the variable that we are looking for in our specific quadratic equation. And we get that y equals to minus b, b is 10, so minus b is minus 10, plus minus square root of b squared, b is 10, so b squared is 10 squared is 100, minus 4 times a is 1, times c is minus 24. Over 2a, a is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. So we got that according to this equation, y equals to minus 10 plus minus, here we have minus 4 times minus 24 is plus 26. And minus 4 times minus 24 is plus 96. And uh, 96 plus 100 is 196. So inside the root we have 196 over 2. 
So we will, we will have two solutions that are possible for y. The first solution is y equals to minus 10. It's actually plus minus. Square root of 196 is 14 over 2. So we will have two solutions that are possible for y. The first solution is y equals to minus 10 minus 14 over 2. Minus 10 minus 14 is minus 24 over 2 is minus 12. So the first solution is that y equals to minus 12. And because of the fact that y is length, it is the length of one side of a triangle, therefore it must be a positive number. So y equals to, I'll write it down, y is the length of the side of a triangle, therefore it must be a positive number. So the solution that y equals to minus 12 is the correct solution. We cancel this solution and we left only with the solution that y equals to minus 10 plus 14 over 2. Minus 10 plus 14 is 4. 4 over 2 is 2. So we found out that y is equal to 2 units so you can write down that y equals to 2 units so I'll copy the right triangle triangle ABD in this new page and we will implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right green triangle triangle ABD ok so here we have y equals to 2 so bd equals to 2 ab equals to 6 and x is the missing variable we will implement the Pythagoras theorem in the right triangle, triangle abd going to the Pythagoras theorem the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars that is to say the square of the hypotenuse is x squared it must be equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars that is to say that is to say, it must, it must be equal to 6 square plus 2 square. So x square equals to 6 square, that is 36, plus 2 square, that is 4. 36 plus 4 is 40. We take out of this equation and we get that x equals to square root of 40. 40 is 4 times 10. So x equals to square root of 4 is 2 times square root of 10. So in conclusion, we found out that x equals to 2 times square root of 10 units. So in terms of numbers, it is equal to 6.32 units. According exactly uh, what uh, it is exactly what we have already found out in the first method. So the answer to the question that line segment x that is actually AD it is equal to either 2 times square of 10 units or in terms of numbers it equals to 6.32 units. Okay we finished with the second method. In the next step I will present to you how to find out the value of line segment a, a D, this is x according to the first method in 
the third method we will define angle B A D as theta and we will define side B D as Y so here we will get that in the right triangle triangle A B D Tangent theta equals to BD over AB. And BD equals to Y. And AB equals to 6. So in conclusion, follow the tangent theta in the right triangle, triangle ABD. Is equal to y over 6. Repeat again. In the right triangle, triangle ABD, triangle theta equals to y over 6. Likewise, <coughs> if you focus on the right triangle, triangle ABC, Then here, tangent theta plus 45 degrees it is equal to BC over AB. Okay, in the right triangle, triangle ABC. Tangent theta plus 45 degrees equals to BC over AB. BC equals to Y plus 10 and AB equals to 6. So in conclusion, the found out the tangent theta plus 45 degrees in the right triangle, triangle ABC equals to Y plus 10 over 6. This will be equation number 1. Okay. We actually have trigonometric identity that states that tangents 45 degrees plus theta is equal to 1 plus tangents theta over 1 minus tangent theta we use this monomotic identity so we can substitute tangent theta plus 45 degrees by this expression we do it now and we get the following equation number one tangent theta plus 45 degrees according to this Trigonometric identity it is equal to 1 plus tangent theta over 1 minus tangent theta. In the following equation number 1, it is equal to y plus 10 over 6. We have already found out that tangent theta equals to y over 6, so we can substitute tangent theta in equation number 1 by y over 6. We'll do it now, and we get that the goal into equation number 1 1 plus tangent theta is y over 6 over 1 minus tangent theta, tangent theta is y over 6. And it is equal to y plus 10 over 6. Here we'll multiply 1 both the numerator, both in the denominator, in the numerator and in the denominator by 6. 
and then we divide it by 6 in order to have a common factor with y over 6 and with minus y over 6 and we get that according to equation number 1 6 plus y over 6 over 6 minus y over 6 equals to 1 y plus 10 over 6 so here we have 6 both in the numerator in, and in the denominator so 6 will get cancelled and we left only with 6 plus y over 6 minus y is equal to y plus 10 over 6 here we cross multiply equation number 1 and we get that according to equation number 1 6 times 6 plus y equals to y plus 10 times 6 minus y we will open the brackets on both sides of equation number 1 and we get that according to equation number 1 6 times 6 is 36 plus 6y and it is equal to 6y minus y square plus 60 minus 10y here we have 6y on both sides of the equation so 6y will get cancelled we will add y square and 10y to this equation, equation number 1 and we get that according to equation number 1 y square plus 10y and we will subtract 60 from this equation, equation number 1 and we get that 24 minus 60 is no, 36 minus 60 is minus 24 and it is equal to 0 so we got the same quadratic equation that we got in, equation, in the second method the quadratic equation is y square plus 10y minus 24 equals to 0 we have two solutions that are possible for y. The first solution is y equals to minus 2f, but because of the fact that y is a, is a length, it must be a positive number, so this solution is the correct solution. And we found also the second solution that y equals to 2. And then I go the right triangle, triangle. ABD and found out that Triangle, triangle ABD, turn into the Pythagoras theorem, x square equals to 6 square plus 2 square, x square equals to 6 square that is 36 plus 2 square that is 4, x square equals to 36 plus 4 that is 40. We took a root of, of this equation in the second method and we got that x equals to the square root of 40 and 40 is 4 times 10 the square root of 4 is 2 so x equals to 2 times square root of 10 units so in terms of numbers it is equal to 6.32 units okay exactly what we have already found out in the first method and in the second method in the next step I will summarize the lecture okay so we start in the first method
So we have here right triangle, triangle ABC. We know that AB equals to 6 units, and again DA, see this again equals to 45 degrees. DC equals to 10 units, and we want to find out the value of line segment AD, that is X. So we did a construction here. We extended line segment AD by a straight line, or side AD by a straight line. And then from point C, we draw perpendicular to the extended AD. So this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle also will be equal to 90 degrees. And we define the touching point between the perpendicular from point C and the extended AD is point E. And here we have uh, in triangle AEC, you know that the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees, so here we have 90 degrees plus uh, 45 degrees plus 90 degrees plus the size of this angle in total they must be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, in triangle AC, the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees, so here 45 degrees plus, nine, uh, plus 90 degrees plus the size of this angle that is actually angle AC, in total they must be equal to 180 degrees. We subtract the 90 degrees and 45 degrees also from this equation. And we found out that the missing angle, angle ACE, this angle equals to 45 degrees. Then we define DE as Y. And we know that in front of equal angles inside the triangle, they are equal size. So those two angles in triangle AEC, they are equal to each other. Therefore, in front of those two equal angles, they are equal sides. That is to say, AE equals to EC. AE equals to EC. But AE equals to X plus Y. So from this equation, A equals to X plus Y. So from this equation, X plus Y equals to A equals to EC. We will derive that EC is also equals to X plus Y. EC is also equals to X plus Y. Those two angles now define as vertex angles, and we know that vertex, vertex angles are equal to each other. That is to say, angle ADB equals to angle EDC. So if we define one angle as alpha, then the other angle must be also equal to alpha. Okay? Again, angle EDC equals to angle ADB. According to the rule, the vertex angles are equal to each other. So if one angle is alpha, then the other angle will be also equal to alpha. And here, in the right triangle, triangle ABD, if this angle is alpha, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus alpha. And the same thing is true in this right triangle. If this angle is alpha, then this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus alpha. So we actually found out that all the angles in the green triangles, they are congruent to each other. Okay? Here, angle BAD equals to angle ECD. Both those two angles are equal to 19 degrees minus alpha. Both those two angles are equal to alpha. And both those two angles are right angles. Therefore, we can conclude from it that the two right triangles are similar to each other according to angle, 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 similarity rule. Triangle ABD is similar to triangle EDC according to angle, 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 similarity rule. Okay? And, and from the fact that the two green triangles are similar to each other, we will conclude that AB over EC equals to BD over DE equals to AD over DC. Okay? 
a b over c equals to b d over d e equals to a d over d c a b equals to 6 units e c equals to x plus y d b b d is b d and d e equals to y according to our definition a d equals to x and d c equals to 10 it is given as the question then we found out the value of b d by implementing the Pythagoras theorem on the right green triangle, triangle ABD. According to the Pythagoras theorem, in this the green triangle, BD square will be equal to AB square plus AD square. In the right triangle ABD, AB square plus BD square equals to AD square. AB equals to 6, so AB square is 6 squared, it is 36, plus BD square, and it is equal to AD square. AD equals to X. According to what is given as the question, so AD square is X square. We subtracted 36 from this equation and found out that BD square equals to X square minus 36. Then we took out out of this equation and found out that BD equals to the square root of X square minus 36. Therefore, we can substitute BD in the equation number one by, by square root of X square minus 36. We did it. And we got that according to equation number 1, 6 over x plus y equals to bd, that is actually square root of x square minus 36, over y, that is equal to x plus over 10. From this uh, long equation, we created two equations. The first equation is the 6 over x plus y equals to uh, x over 10. We cross multiply the equation number 1 and we got that 6 times 10 is 16. It is equal to x times x plus y. We open the brackets on both uh, on this side of equation number 1 and we got that 60 equals to x times x is x squared, x times y is xy. We subtracted x squared for this equation, equation number 1, and we got that actually that xy equals to x times y equals to 60 minus x squared. Then we get this equation number 2 from this long equation, and according to equation number 2, square root of x squared minus 36 over y equals to x over 10. Okay, we cross multiplied this equation, equation number 2, and we got that. 10 times square root of x square minus 36 equals to xy. We squared both sides of equation number 2. So here we will have that uh, 60. No. Here. So we have equation number 1. Uh, for the for x y in equation number one we have the expression of x y and we have equ equation number two that is actually also the expression for x y. Then we created the equation number three that states that x y according to equation number one must be equal to x y according to equation number two. So x y according to equation number one is 60 minus x squared. And it must be equal to xy according to equation number 2, that is actually 10 times square root of x squared minus 36. Here we square both sides of equation number 3, and we got that 6 times x squared squared equals to 10 squared, and here the square cancels the root, and we have to only with x squared minus 36, so according to equation number 3, we got that 60 minus x squared squared equals to 100 times x squared minus 36. So we open the brackets on both sides of equation number 3, and we got that 60 minus x squared equals to 60 squared, that is 3600, plus x, uh, x squared squared, that is x to the power of 4, minus 2 times 60 times x squared, and it is equal to 100 x squared, uh, minus other times 36, that is 3600, minus 3600. Here, 
We added 3600 to this equation, equation number 3, and we got the 3600 plus 4600 4, is equal to 7200 plus x to the power of 4 minus 2 times minus 60x squared is minus 120 times x squared and it is equal to 100x squared. We subtracted 100 squared from this equation, equation number 3, and we got that x to the power of 4 minus 100x squared minus 120x squared minus 100x squared is minus 220x squared plus 7200 equals to 0. Then we substituted minus 220x squared by minus 100x squared minus 40x squared because minus 100 minus uh, 40 is minus 220 and we got that x squared minus 180x x to the power of 4 minus 180x squared minus 40 times x squared plus uh, 7200 equals to 0 we took x squared for as a common factor out of this expression, so inside the market we have x squared minus 180, and we took 4 or minus 40 from these two expressions, and so inside the root we will have x squared minus 180. Then we took x squared minus 180 as a common factor out of those two expressions, so what is left inside the root? We have inside the root x squared minus 40. So in conclusion, we got that the common equation number 3 x squared minus 180 times x squared minus 40 equals to 0. So here we have two solutions that are possible for uh, x. The first solution is x squared minus 180 equals to 0, and the second solution is x squared minus 40 equals to 0. According to the first solution, x squared equals to 180. So we took out of this equation and we got that x equal to the square root of 180 and 180 is 36 times 5, so we substituted 180 by 36 times 5 and the square root of 36 is 6, so in conclusion we got that according to equation number 1 x equals to 6 times square root of 5 units or in terms of numbers it is equal to 13.416 that is greater than 10 units and the second solution for x is x squared minus 40 equals to 0, that is to say x squared equals to 40. We took out of this equation, equation number 2, and we got that x equals to the square root of 40. 40 is 4 times 10, and the square root of 4 is 2. So in conclusion, according to equation number 2, we found out that x equals to 2 times square root of 10, and in terms of numbers, it is equal to 6.33 to 6.32 that is less than 10 units. So we got two solutions that are possible for x. The first solution is x equals to 13.416, that is greater than 10, and the second solution is x equals to 6.32, that is less than 10 units. Okay, then I copied the right triangle triangle ABD and the right triangle triangle ADC in this new page, and here we have a triangle, the green triangle, triangle ABD, have the exterior angle, angle ADC. And the size of an exterior angle of a triangle, the size of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two interior angles that are not adjacent to it. So the size of this exterior angle, angle ADC, angle ADC is an, an external angle in relation to the green triangle. So the size of this external angle, angle ADC, will be equal to the sum of the angles, to the sum of the internal angles of, tri of the green triangle that are not adjacent to it. And the two internal angles that are not adjacent to it is theta plus 90 degrees. So the value of this angle, angle ADC, will be equal to theta plus 90 degrees. Okay, and we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So here we get that 45 degrees plus 90 degrees plus theta 
plus the missing angle, angle ACD, in total they must be equal to 180 degrees. We subtract the 90 degrees, in this equation we got the 45 degrees plus theta plus angle ACD equals to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees, it is 90 degrees. Then we subtract the 45 degrees from this equation and we got that angle theta plus angle ACD equals to 45 degrees. We subtract it theta from this equation and we found out that the missing angle, angle ACD, this angle equals to 45 degrees minus theta. Okay, so this is angle equals to 45 degrees and minus theta. Therefore, you can see that in this triangle, this angle is the smallest angle. Angle ACD that is equal to 45 degrees minus theta is the smallest angle in triangle ADC. Angle ACD that is equal to 45 degrees minus theta is the smallest angle in triangle ADC. And we have rule number two, according to rule number two, in front of the smallest angle in the triangle, there is the shortest side. Again, in front of the smallest angle in the triangle, there is the shortest side. So here, it means that in front of this smallest angle in triangle ADC, there is side AD that is equal to X. So according to rule number two, side AD that is equal to X, is the, it is the shortest side in triangle ADC. That is to say AD that is equal to X, it is less than 10 units because it is the shortest side. Okay. In triangle ADC according to rule number two, Angle ACD is equal to 45 degrees minus theta. It is the shortest. Ah, it is the smallest, uh, the shortest uh, side. Uh, so AD is the shortest side in triangle ADC. Therefore, AD must be less than 10 units because we, because in triangle ADC we have one one side that, that is this is that is equal to 10 units and. Uh, and uh, therefore, in front of the shortest, uh, sh smallest sides, uh, in front of the smallest angle that is equal to 45 degrees from the theta, we have AD that is equal to X. So X must be the smallest side in triangle ADC. Therefore, it must be less than 10 units. AD must be less than 10 units. And uh, we got two solutions that are possible for x. One solution is x equals to 13.416 units. That is greater than 10. Therefore, this solution that is, is not possible because x must be less than 10 units. And the solution that is left for x is that x equals to 2 times square root of 10 units. That is 6.32 units. That is less than 10 units. And that is the solution to the question that the missing line segment and AD that is equal to X, it is equal to either 10 times square root of 2 units or in terms of numbers, it equals to 6.32 units. We finished with the first method, then I presented to you how to find out the value of angle of side uh, AD that is equal to X according to the second method. In the second method, we did another construction from point D. We draw a straight line on AC in such a way that angle AED will be equal to 45 degrees. So in triangle ADE, we have two equal angles. And we have the rule that in front of equal angles in the triangle, there are equal sides. That is to say, AD must be equal to DE. But AD equals to X. Therefore, from this equation, X equals to AD equals to DE, we, we derive that DE is also equal to X. Okay? So here, we defined angle 
B A D is theta, therefore in the right triangle, triangle A B D, this angle must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and uh, we know that B C, uh, A B C is a triangle, therefore B C must be a straight line because it is one side of a triangle, and all the sides of a triangle must be a straight line. So BC is a straight line. And we have the rule that the sum of the angles on one side of a straight line are equal to 180 degrees. So if we focus on the upper side of the straight line BC at point D, then the sum of the angles here must be equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have here? We have here one angle that is 90 degrees minus theta, we have this angle that is 90 degrees plus this missing angle. In total, the sum of those three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. I'll repeat again 90 degrees minus theta plus 90 degrees plus the size of angle in this in total, they must be equal to 180 degrees. Here we have 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 180 degrees, so we have 180 degrees on both sides of the equation, so 180 degrees will get cancelled. and we we'll get that minus theta plus the missing angle in an EDC must be equal to zero. We added theta to this equation and we found out that the missing angle angle EDC equals to theta. So in the right triangle, angle EDC, EDF equals to theta. So if angle EDF equals to theta, then this angle angle DEF must be equal to 90 degrees minus theta. So we actually then proved that those two green right angles can go into each other. Why they can go into each other? First of all, those two angles that are equal to each other, they are both equal to theta. Those two angles that are also equal to each other, they are both equal to 90 degrees minus theta. And we have also side AD equals to side DE equals to X. So actually, we found out that triangle ABD is going to go into triangle DEF according to angle side angle rule. And from the fact that those two triangles can go into each other, we conclude that AB is equal to DF. AB is equal to DF, but AB equals to six units. So DF will be also equal to 6 units. 6 equals to AB equals to DF. From this equation we derive that DF is also equal to 6 units. And what is the value of FC? FC equals to DC minus DF. FC equals to DC minus DF. So FC equals to DC that is 10 units minus DF that is 6. So FC equals to 4 units. So we found out that FC equals to 4 units. Then we also know that BD equals to EF because of the fact that those two right triangles can go into each other and those two sides are corresponding sides in the right triangles that must be equal to each other. Okay? And we define BD as Y. So from this equation Y equals to BD equals to EF, we derive that EF is also equals to Y. Then we proved that the right triangle, triangle ABC, is similar to the small right triangle, triangle EFC. Why are they similar to each other? First of all, they both have right angle. Those two angles they are equal to 90 degrees. And they have also a common angle. This angle is a common angle. And the third angle must be also equal to, in both triangles, the first of angles must be also equal in both triangles according to the third angle theorem. If we have two angles in a triangle that are equal to each other, then the first of angles must be equal to each other because they are complementary to 180 degrees. So we found out that the right triangle, triangle ABC, is going to the right triangle, triangle EFC according to angle, angle, angle similarity rule. And, and from the fact that those two Right triangles can go into each other. We conclude that AB over BC equals to EF over FC. 
AB over BC equals to F over FC. AB is 6, BC is Y plus 10, EF is Y, and FC is 4. And uh, we got the equation that Y over 6 over Y plus 10 equals to Y over 4. We uh, solved this equation and we got to a quadratic equation. We solved the quadratic equation and we found out that y is equal to two units. And then from this uh, right triangle, we found out that the value of x is equal to 6.32 units. So it is equal to 2 times root of 10 units, so in terms of numbers, it is 6.32 units. Then I present it to you how to find out the value of x according to the first method. In this method, we know that we define this angle as theta and side bd is y, so tangent theta equals to y over 6 from one side, but from the other side, in the right angle, triangle ABC, tangent theta plus 45 degrees equals to y plus 10 over 6. And uh, we have the trigonometric identity that states that tangent theta plus 45 degrees equals to 1 plus tangent theta over 1 minus tangent theta. So we can substitute tangent theta plus 45 degrees by this expression. We did it. We solve this quadratic equation and we got that the value of y is 2 and from this uh, right triangle we found out that x equals to either 2 times square root of 10 units or in terms of numbers it is equal to 6.32 units. Okay, thank you very much.